Hi, Will. Hey, Hillary. How are you? Good. How are you? Pretty good. So I have a slide I'm going to show just at the beginning that has some links for the conference. Um, and then I'll turn it over to you. Do you want to try sharing your screen now just in case yeah, there I was, are any hiccups? I was going to um, promote the Wikidata track right off the bat. Can you see that? Yes. Great. Awesome.
Hi, Susan. Hi, Hillary. Hi, Will. Hi, everyone. Okay, I got the chat open. Okay, great. Hi everyone, it looks like it's the top of the hour and we have a lot of content to cover. So I'd like to jump right in. Um, welcome to the Diving into Wikidata workshop led by Will Kent. That's part of the LD4 2020 conference. We hope this workshop will provide you with a great foundation for all of the Wikidata content that's coming up during the rest of the conference. Um, before I introduce and hand things over to Will, I wanted to mention a few logistical details. 
you'll see on the slide I'm sharing links to the conference schedule, website, um, Twitter, and an invite to join the Slack channel. There are a couple of Slack channels you might be interested in on the LD4 Slack. There's one specifically for the conference dedicated to Wikidata. So that's the LD4 underscore 2020 underscore Wikidata underscore track. And then we also have a um, general Wikidata channel that's part of the LD4 community and will uh, persist beyond the conference as well. So you might be interested in that one too. There's a link to our community participation guidelines as well. So Susan um, Radowski and I, I'm Hilary Thorson, will be facilitating the entire workshop and Christine Ford Sabder Azla will be joining us for the second half. Feel free to ask questions using the raised hand feature in Zoom if you'd like to speak. Uh, you should be able to find that by um, double clicking on participants and then you should see a little raise hand icon. Um, we'll then call on you and you can unmute yourself and ask your question and you're welcome to jump in with questions or comments at any time. We'll also be monitoring chat. So if you'd prefer to submit your question or comment there as well, um, we'll keep an eye out. Um, does anyone have any questions so far about the, the logistics for the workshop? Great, so if you do, um, feel free to raise your hand or ask in chat and we'll um, get them there. So now I'll turn things over to Will. Will is the Wikidata Program Manager at Wiki Education. For the past year and a half, he's been building a training program for Wikidata and is always excited to teach new community members about Wikidata. Previously, Will was an instruction and electronic resources librarian. He's excited by the potential of linked data, getting linked data into more classrooms and improving representation on all Wikimedia projects. So I'm very excited to have him uh, present this workshop and so I'll turn things over to you, Will. Awesome, thanks, Hillary. Can everybody hear me okay? All right, nodding heads, perfect. Well, everybody, uh, welcome, whether you're watching live or in the future on the recording. Thank you so much for your interest. Thanks for having me. Uh, I uh, am thrilled to be part of the LD4 conference again this year. I'm thrilled that there's so much interest in, in Wikidata and I'm excited to be able to present to everybody about Wikidata. Um, what my goal is today um, is to introduce Wikidata to everybody in a digestible, interactive, even fun sort of way, uh, just so that you're ready for the rest of the conference uh, and feel like you've got a firm grasp on Wikidata moving forward, just because it'll be a central part to a lot of people's presentations. Um, there are a lot of us in, in this session today, but I would like to try to make it as conversational and as cozy as possible, as much as you can on Zoom. Uh, so please, if you do have a question, raise your hand, let me know. Um, there, there is a lot of content to cover, so I'm gonna try to balance questions with moving forward with the content. So I, I, I hope I don't cut anybody off or uh, ignore anybody. Uh, if I do, it's just out of interest of, of getting through all of this, this stuff. Um, and we will be editing later in the session today. So a general overview of what I'm hoping to cover uh, is just like a history of Wikidata, um, some basic vocabulary, some common terms that we'll be using to get oriented. We'll walk through a Wikidata item just so we know where everything is located. Uh, we'll talk about some um, discovery tools. Uh, we'll do some editing and then we'll wrap up with some querying just to put a cherry on top. Um, and when we do the editing, I'll send a link to join uh, the dashboard for this presentation. Uh, the whole idea behind the dashboard is to share some additional resources and to help track your edits. Um, and that's just mostly to keep track of uh, what, we're, what we're doing. And if there are questions, we can kind of zero in on those questions a little bit faster. Uh, so we'll get to that in a little bit. Um, but with that, I think I'm just going to dive right in. Oh, the last thing I wanted to say is let me just share my screen to see if this works. I really wanted to plug the rest of the, the Wikidata track at the LD4 conference. Uh, if this session doesn't satisfy all your Wikidata questions, which I, I hope it doesn't, uh, there are all these additional sessions, which uh, I would encourage you to attend, uh, including the uh, back to, uh, intro to basics uh, tutorial, which my colleague Rob Fernandez is gonna lead. Uh, that should build off of some of the concepts that we talk about today. Uh, and this advanced uh, tools uh, by Mahir is gonna be a really good presentation too. 
Uh, so please feel free to check all of these out. I think uh, these presentations are going to be excellent compliments to what we're, we're talking about today. All right, uh, so welcome everybody. Let's talk a little bit about uh, Wikidata. Uh, so Wikidata is the uh, central link data repository to all Wikimedia projects. And it's important to phrase it that way because that's how uh, Wikidata got its start. Uh, as you may or may not know, there are 300 different language versions of Wikipedia. Uh, and rather than go through and update every single, uh, every single language, uh, wouldn't it be great to have some central uh, data repository to call those pieces of data from to update all of those languages all at once? Uh, that, among many other things, is what led to uh, Wikidata being born. Um, incidentally, uh, since then, this happened in 2012, so six or seven years ago, um, or eight years ago. Wow, time. Um, <laughs> Uh, Wikidata has since become a hub of identifiers, a hub of description, and uh, the backbone of uh, a lot of linked data initiatives on the internet. Uh, and it is significant because uh, as a linked data repository, it's both machine and human readable. So that has uh, big implications in terms of automation, so doing batch edits, uh, but it also has implications in being used by other uh, organizations and companies. Uh, so a lot of algorithms are trained off of Wikidata, a lot of digital assistants use Wikidata to provide context for uh, natural voice recognition and answering your questions, so your series and your Alexas of the world. And if you're interested in learning more about this, I think this article I'm going to drop in the chat. I think I can drop it in the chat. Maybe I can't. Hmm. Maybe the chat's not working for me right now. Oh, here it is. Okay. Uh, this article should provide some additional context around the, the social implications of Wikidata. It's from Wired Magazine from a year and a half ago. Uh, and feel free to, to dive in on your own time, but I find that it's a, a really good frame for, for why Wikidata is so important and why participating in Wikidata is so important. All right, uh, some other important things to know about Wikidata before we actually pay it a visit uh, is that it started um, from a lot of data from Wikipedia. Uh, and so you will see a lot of references to disambiguation pages on Wikipedia, categories on Wikipedia, uh, sources and references to different language versions of Wikipedia. Uh, and this is where the initial push uh, for all Wikidata's data comes from. Uh, it had to start somewhere. It's not the best uh, source currently, uh, just because you can get a lot more specific with references and sourcing on Wikidata. Um, but it is important to know that um, Wikidata came from these other uh, Wikimedia project, specifically uh, Wikipedia. Uh, since then, it's become something much, much larger, uh, representing collections from hundreds of institutions globally. Uh, it's a large multilingual project, um, and it has is, it is grown uh, beyond just representing uh, all the, the data points in, in Wikipedia, all the, all the different language Wikipedias, uh, to, to this hub of identifiers and descriptions, like I mentioned before. Um, and it's also really important to know that um, Wikidata it has a CC0 license, uh, which means all the data that you see on Wikidata can be downloaded and reused. Uh, so you can take parts of it, you can contribute parts of it, um, and that is a very powerful aspect of, of Wikidata that can't be stated uh, enough. Um, so uh, enough history of Wikidata. Let's, let's spend some time. Well, I want to cover one more thing before we actually uh, go through an item in Wikidata, uh, and that is discussing just a general uh, general representation of data on linked or uh, on Wikidata. Uh, it is linked data, and if you're new to linked data, um, linked data is just uh, expressing facts uh, in the form of triples, semantic triples, uh, which in a lot of linked data systems are referred to as subjects, predicates, and objects. But uh, in Wikidata parlance, we'll use the words item, property, and value. Uh, and what I mean by this, I'm just going to share a screen from one of the trainings that uh, I've got listed on the dashboard. Uh, this is uh, a screenshot of the uh, Mary Curie article on Wikipedia. And if we scroll down a little bit, this is kind of like the, the most fundamental aspect of linked data, uh, which is expressing information in terms of these triples. So uh, all of these, we'll call them statements, uh, refer to uh, Mary Curie, uh, and we're describing different aspects of her. Uh, so we have these properties to describe her occupation. So she was both a physicist and a chemist, so we can list that one twice. Uh, and she worked uh, in the field of radioactivity. 
So describing her in these ways rather than semantic sentences, uh, which is what we're used to uh, reading and, and that's how we're used to talking, uh, describing it this way makes things more machine readable um, and makes it more standardized. So this is a really important distinction between Wikidata and Wikipedia. Um, and this is uh, basically how uh, linked data works in, in Wikidata. So with that, uh, let's dive into Wikidata and I'll walk you through an item, um, which is how we describe records, how we describe uh, entities uh, in, in Wikidata. Uh, we use the word item. And uh, I'll, I'll hold off on questions until I'm done with the item walkthrough and then we can take a little question break uh, and check in with everyone then. Uh, so let me share my screen. Uh, and everyone should see the, the big beautiful homepage of Wikidata. Uh, and I am going to walk you through the entry uh, to San Francisco, which is where I am uh, broadcasting from right now. It's a big, it's a beautiful day, blue sky. Uh, so I just typed in San Francisco uh, into the search and this is the entry for San Francisco. A couple things to note right away is that uh, this is the English label for the concept of San Francisco. Uh, Wikidata doesn't really care what the label is. The most important thing is that is this Q number. Um, so San Francisco is called Q62 in Wikidata. This is kind of what makes uh, Wikidata multilingual. You can express items and concepts in any language that you want. Uh, you can see this reflected in the URL for this particular item. So it's just uh, wikidata.org slash wiki slash Q62. Every single item in Wikidata has a corresponding Q number. The lower the number is uh, just means that was the order in which it was created. So this was one of the very first uh, items created on Wikidata. I think we're up to eight, 88 million, no wait, yeah, 88 million items on Wikidata right now. It's a lot more than I can count. Uh, so this is one of the very first ones that's created. Um, scrolling down below the label, we can see there's a brief description. Descriptions are short. Uh, descriptions, like a quick sentence, uh, mostly to distinguish uh, items with the same name from other items or to provide some additional context around items. So there are multiple San Francisco's that exist in the universe. Uh, and this is the one that uh, is in California. Uh, below that are uh, aliases. So uh, formal names, nicknames, uh, other names for places. Um, and this is useful because people refer to places, things, ideas, uh, by different names. Uh, and so this is how Wikidata accounts for that. Scrolling down, we can see the same information represented, but by language. Uh, so my browser defaults to English. Your browser might default to other languages, and those will be prioritized at the top. I have Spanish as a secondary language because sometimes I edit in Spanish. Uh, but to see a full list of all the languages, just click on all entered languages. And you can see uh, that Wikidata is very multilingual representing the city of San Francisco in all these different languages. Uh, in some cases, it might be lacking a description or might be lacking aliases uh, in those specific languages. So translating uh, Wikidata labels and uh, descriptions is always an activity you can do if you're multilingual, which I encourage you to do if you can, uh, because that makes items that much more useful to other language speakers. But I think it's important to recognize that uh, Wikidata is a very global project. Uh, and there is an emphasis on a lot of Western concepts and a lot of Western languages, but there is the ability to translate all of these things uh, to languages from all over the world. Um, so these are all labels, like I said, in uh, all the language, languages represented on uh, various Wikimedia projects. I'm just gonna collapse this so it takes up less space. Uh, and those are uh, the very first things you see on uh, any Wikidata item. So below this are uh, statements, which are the triples, which is what I was uh, discussing earlier, these, these basic building blocks or sentences that help describe concepts, items, individuals, events uh, on, on Wikidata. Any item uh, consists of statements. And so the very first statement that we're looking at is instance of, uh, which is a membership class. It just describes uh, this one unique thing, the city of San Francisco. Uh, and you can see that it contains multiple values. Each one of these boxes uh, is a different value. So uh, it's a city, but it's many different kinds of cities. So it's a city in the United States. It's a big city. It's a charter city. Uh, and uh, the item, San Francisco, the property, instance of, and these values uh, constitute all the, the triples or statements. And so this particular Wikidata item has several different kinds of statements. 
Uh, and this is what we use to describe uh, and define things on Wikidata. So we can see here's another property that's part of, it's part of the San Francisco Bay Area, it's part of this metropolitan region. Uh, scrolling down a little further, we see this image property uh, and we can have values that are uh, other items on Wikidata. So you can see that this refers to another queue item uh, and below the image uh, takes an image, which makes sense. So you can have different data types represented in these triples, which is very significant because you can ex express different things like dates or strings or names, or in this case, an image. Uh, maps, we'll get to maps in a little bit. Uh, below inception, you can see that this is a date. So this is not another Wikidata item. This is just a string of numbers, which indicates a date, uh, official names, native labels. Um, and these are all important elements of, of Wikidata that we'll spend some more time with during the conference. Uh, and we'll go into more detail uh, in this presentation in a little bit. Um, and you can see now, right now, the founded by, we're back to other Wikidata items being the values. Uh, and this is important because these connections, these relationships uh, will be queryable, which we'll go into more detail to in a little bit. Um, but like I said, basic building blocks of, of Wikidata are these triples. The, item, uh, the property, and the value. So here's, here's a map just showing another data type. Uh, and let me scroll down to really start to mix things up. So uh, the head of government property is important. In San Francisco, there are mayors who are the heads of the cities. Uh, and you can see there are multiple values for mayors because there are different mayors over time. And the way that Wikidata expresses uh, the change in mayors over time is by having these little tiny statements within the statements, which are called qualifiers on Wikidata. And the whole idea behind qualifiers uh, are to supply uh, contrast and um, explain with a little further context uh, when things change and why things change. So th these changes are expressed with start time and end time, uh, which is a really conceptually easy way of saying this person was mayor, or uh, it's valid that this person was mayor uh, during this particular range. Uh, and so there are many different kinds of qualifiers on Wikidata. Um, I think for all of us in this session, it's just important to remember that uh, you can use qualifiers to further describe the difference between values, which is important in terms of uh, clarity and expression representation, and also has an impact on how you can query things. Uh, scrolling down to the very bottom, uh, London Breed is the current mayor of San Francisco. Uh, and you might notice uh, that there's this little triangle, circle, triangle combo just to the left of the value uh, for head of government. Uh, and these are rankings. Uh, and rankings in Wikidata are important because uh, you might have several values for something like this head of government property, uh, but you probably only care about who's currently mayor. Uh, you might not need to know all the historical information. So rankings are a good way for when you run a query to prioritize uh, the most recent or current uh, values for this particular property. Uh, and so if we hover over this top triangle, it will say this is the preferred rank. Uh, and that's how you emphasize that this is uh, the important or most current thing or most accurate. Uh, the middle uh, circle, that's a normal rank. This is what all values default to is just a normal rank. I'm not sure why it's not showing up as normal rank on my screen, but that's what, it, what it's called. Uh, and then the downward facing arrow or triangle is a deprecated rank. Uh, and that is for something that is up for debate. It might be uh, an incorrect value, but still significant enough to track on Wikidata. Uh, so this is a really interesting aspect of uh, Wikidata is that it's very expressive in the way that you can capture and represent information. Um, and so between qualifiers and ranks, uh, you can really get granular in, in how true things are or in what your priorities are uh, in expressing a certain relationship between things. And I think that's one of the most interesting aspects of, of Wikidata. Okay, moving right along, this is great. Um, so we've covered uh, items, properties, values, qualifiers, ranks. Um, much like Wikipedia, Wikidata requires references to back up any claim that you make or any assertion that you make on, on Wikidata. So every single statement you make should have references. Now you can see right here that uh, you don't need a reference for something to exist on Wikidata. Uh, and the idea is that someone will go through and add references uh, to this particular statement to prove that Mark Farrell was indeed uh, mayor for just a couple months in 2018. Uh, and you can do that with any number of, of references, just like you can on Wikipedia. Um, London Breed is interesting. Uh, she has two references, and I like using this as an example. Uh, we will be editing references later uh, in this workshop today. Uh, so this is a good thing to pay attention to. 
And I will review this one more time before we start making edits, but I think this is a, a very common way to make references on Wikidata. So you can see that there are like many, many statements that describe this particular reference that backs up the claim that London Breed is currently the mayor. Uh, this top reference comes from a San Francisco Chronicle article, uh, and it's just structured to say when the article was published, when it was retrieved online, uh, who wrote this particular uh, article, sorry about that, uh, and then uh, a link to that article. Uh, this is a very detailed reference, and most references on Wiki Wikidata are not this detailed, but I, I love using this as an example because you can get that granular in describing a reference. Um, we'll, be, we'll be describing references in two ways uh, in this particular workshop. One is using the state, oh, this is, my screen is acting up, okay. Uh, one is using the stated in um, property. Uh, and all the stated in property means is that it comes from another Wikidata item that represents uh, a reference. So in this case, it comes from the San Francisco Chronicle newspaper. It was stated in that newspaper. It was an article in the newspaper. Uh, and the stated in property always takes another Wikidata item. Uh, so this is important for us because if we want to reference something and we use stated in and it's not a Wikidata item, we'll have to create that item, which is uh, acceptable, it's allowed. Um, so that's that's one interesting quirk with, with stated in. I think most of us uh, will probably be using the reference URL way of uh, creating references, which is just a, a URL to a website or an article uh, that references the fact that backs up the claim uh, for whatever statement we're making. So in this case, it's the mayor's website, uh, which says that she's mayor of San Francisco. Uh, and that is a, a notable reference in Wikidata. And all you need for that is the reference URL and the actual URL uh, to create that reference. Uh, so references in Wikidata, extremely important. Um, it's a really easy place to start editing on Wikidata just because uh, for all the references that exist on Wikidata, there are several statements without references. And the reason why the Wikidata community allows statements to be made without references is because there are some relationships that don't require references. So a lot of statements around uh, people being humans, uh, most, I mean, all people are humans, uh, you don't need to reference that. And so there are some instances in which you don't need a reference for a claim to be made, uh, which is why not all references are required. However, uh, a lot of us coming from the library world, I think we appreciate provenance and being able to back up claims. And so we're gonna go in here in a little bit and add some references to things. Uh, okay, some other uh, just, uh, overview aspects of Wikidata. Um, this population property, uh, similar to head of government, population changes. This is another example of qualifiers uh, in action. Uh, you can see they're using the point in time qualifier to say that uh, in April 2010, this is what the population of the city was. And the, the determination method is the census. And if we expand the reference, we'll see that it was stated in the 2010 US Census with the reference URL for that census link. Uh, so this is a very neat example of where the information came from, stated in two different ways. Uh, and that's, that's how you can represent population on Wikidata. I'm just gonna quickly scroll through a lot of this. Sorry if, if it gives you a little visual whiplash. There's just a lot of information on this particular uh, item. Uh, and just maybe I'll pause for a second and just take a step back and say that um, the more, the more properties being used, the more statements being used on an item, the more description something has. Uh, and if you're unfamiliar with how to model something, and by model, I mean choosing which properties to describe that particular item, I recommend just going through a series of items on Wikidata until you, you find a very well-developed one and using that as a template or model uh, for the items that you wanna create or the items that you wanna work on. I've looked at a lot of different cities. I like using cities as examples on Wikidata, and this one happens to be a very well-sourced uh, and, and well-modeled city. Uh, and I think this is a very common way of, of understanding editing on, on Wikidata. There are some very strict and formal models for certain items, but uh, this is a newer aspect of Wikidata. Uh, and I think it's just good for uh, getting oriented to Wikidata to explore it a little bit and try to understand the way that the community has been modeling different things like cities or people or, or books or other resources. Uh, so he, here in this section of um, the San Francisco item, we can see that there are a lot of categories. Uh, and this, again, refers back to Wikipedia categories, which is good to remember. Um, so all of these categories are not just like general categories in the world, but specific to, to Wikipedia, which is important to remember. 
And then at the bottom of every single item of uh, Wikidata are identifiers. And identifiers refer to authority control in other collections or databases. And this is one of the most important aspects of, of Wikidata regarding libraries. Uh, so you can see right here, if you're familiar with uh, VF, uh, this links you through to the VF identifier for the city of San Francisco, which in turn links you to all of the other identifiers that VF keeps track of. And so this is a really important way to uh, validate among different institutions that we're all talking about the same thing uh, and that we're all referring to the same thing. Uh, and uh, these identifiers on Wikidata are becoming increasingly popular uh, and important, so much so that now the Library of Congress keeps track of Wikidata items just because they're becoming an authority of themselves. Um, and I think the connectivity aspect is, is a really fascinating feature of, of Wikidata. Um, so if you represent a collection or you represent uh, uh, an organization, museum, library that has unique identifiers, it is very possible, I mean, everyone can create properties uh, on Wikidata that represent an, an ID uh, locally, uh, and you can start to add your items um, as they relate to other Wikidata items. So this one happens to have a lot because it's a, a big American city, and you can just see all of these references to San Francisco in all of these other databases. And then at the very, very bottom of every single Wikidata item, are the Wikipedia or other Wikimedia project pages that this particular item uh, represents or supports. So like I mentioned, uh, Wikipedia has 300 language, languages represented. Uh, San Francisco has articles in 170 of them. So all of these articles point to this particular Wikidata item as representing the city of San Francisco. Uh, there are lesser known Wikimedia projects like Wikinews or Wikiquote. Maybe some of us are familiar with uh, Wikimedia Commons, which is the image repository for all Wikimedia projects. Uh, and that points to this particular Wikidata item too. Uh, so you can access all of these uh, different Wikidata items uh, from the bottom of, uh, or w Wikipedia articles from the bottom of this particular Wikidata item. Well, we've got a question in chat. What does the Q stand for in an item ID? Oh, uh, the Q stands for one of the founders of Wikidata's wife's name begins with the letter Q. And I think that's where it comes from. It's, in other words, just a, a random letter that somebody picked. That's a great question. <laughs> um, oh, and one more. Yeah. Um, can you provide a good and well-sourced Wikidata, Wikidata entry that we can follow in the future, like San Francisco that you just showed? Uh, yes. I mean, I would, I would recommend the San Francisco one. That's why I'm using it as an example. But if there's something in a different domain that you're interested in, let me know. And I can think off the top of my head if, if there's a, a good exemplar uh, for that area. Uh, I'll, I'll think of more during this course, but hold on. Maybe I'll, I'll stop for a little bit and see. Oh, anyone famous? I'm just reading the chat. Famous works. Yeah, let me think on this for a little bit. Uh, I want to make sure I give you some good examples. Um, but I, I use this one just because it kind of hits on every single element of Wikidata really well. Like there are really good uses of ranks, really good uses of qualifiers, really good and diverse sets of references that are expressed both in terms of uh, stated in and reference URLs. Um, oh yeah, if anyone else knows of stuff off the top of their head, uh, I would encourage you to share that too. This is a very communal way of approaching it. Um, let me just see, Wikidata items can be used as subject headings for library catalogs. Uh, they, they can be. I'm not sure how common that practice is. Does anyone else know if libraries are using Wikidata items as subject headings? I don't know how common it is, especially if you're um, part of a cataloging cooperative that may have some existing requirements like using um, Library of Congress subject headings, but I imagine for certain projects, um, maybe with more digital collections where you have um, more latitude with um, using different identifiers, it's Wikidata is being used more and more. Um, and I think especially with archival projects too. Does anyone else have any? Uh, let's see, it says Adam is saying, uh, they've used them as attributes and authority records. Joy used one for Mount Tatum since there is no LC authority for it. So, so yes, some are used uh, Wikidata as identifiers. 
So it looks like Adam created some denim items to use in the 386 of Bib Records along with URI and Subfield 1. Cool. So yeah, there you go. All right, well, I think, I think that just about covers my introduction to a Wikidata item. I realized I uh, touched on a lot of big concepts very, very quickly, but we seem to be at a natural pausing point. So let me just open it up for questions about Wikidata items in particular. There's a lot more that I'll cover, I promise, but um, does anyone have questions about how items are created or modeled or uh, how you can express uh, different kinds of information as a Wikidata item? All right, cool. Well, if, if questions do come up, um, feel free to pause me and let me know, but I'll just, I'll just keep going for now. Um, so we've spent some time talking about items, uh, which are great, uh, but then the next big thing that we need to discuss are properties on, on Wikidata. So properties describe the relationships between items and values, um, and they are all user generated, just like everything else on Wikidata. And so properties are, are one of the most dynamic and interesting aspects of Wikidata, I think, uh, and something that really sets Wikidata apart from other uh, linked data environments. So let's, let's dive into Wikidata again and explore some properties. Uh, we're back on the San Francisco page. Uh, and I'd like to highlight the image property, which might seem straightforward enough, but it turns out it's kind of complicated. Uh, so if you want to learn about any property, all you have to do is just click on the property you want to learn about, in this case, image, uh, where items take the letter Q, uh, properties take the letter P, and the P comes from, from property. The story is a little less interesting for properties. Um, image, the image property is P18, so there is a number that corresponds to every single property. I think we're over 8,000 properties uh, on Wikidata right now, which is cool. Um, and you can see right here that uh, there are descriptions of this property in terms of statements. Um, but I think the better place to go to to learn about the property usage is this little discussion tab up at the top. So if you've done any editing on Wikipedia before, uh, you know that uh, each page has a talk page, which is kind of like the editorial space where people discuss what should and shouldn't be uh, contained within an article. The same is true of Wikidata properties and items. Uh, for the property, uh, you can click on this discussion tab, and this includes uh, the documentation around property usage, which is pretty cool. Uh, so you can see there are all these fields that talk about how uh, or what this property represents, uh, the relationship that the property is trying to capture, uh, if there are any limitations for using this particular property, uh, and some examples. And this is important because uh, there are a lot of properties on Wikidata that seem similar or that could represent different relationships. And so understanding how the community is using this through examples is one of the easiest, way, easiest ways in my mind to understand how to use a particular property. Um, and there's also a lot of additional information with categories for images, just because this is so central to Wikimedia Commons and Wikipedia, and then a series of lists uh, to understand this, this particular property's usage. Uh, I like showcasing this particular property because it's used uh, very heavily across uh, Wikidata. Um, and it's a very, it's a common thing where we're all very accustomed to images uh, and understanding how, how you use an image to describe things. Um, one interesting note uh, within the documentation is that you can always link back to the proposal for this particular property. So in order for properties to exist on Wikidata, you have to propose them. And then a proposal is basically just filling out a form that looks like this that describes what you want your property to represent. The community has about a week to discuss it. If there are any issues, um, people raise them and the property proposer person uh, has an opportunity to update that proposal and then it's either approved or tabled or uh, rejected. Um, and that happens all the time. Uh, a lot of properties are supported, a lot aren't. Uh, and the whole idea behind properties on, on Wikidata is that they should be well used. There should be some universality to these properties. So a lot of ultra specific properties don't get accepted um, and they should represent something that's significant in Wikidata. So if it only applies to like three items, that's probably not going to be supported. Um, below this is a list of property constraints and property constraints are essentially guides uh, or rules to help define a property. So this very this top one right here says that uh, the image property has to have uh, a value that is an image file. So this is a list of all the um, 
file endings that are, are accepted for this particular property. Um, as we scroll down, we can see that uh, it takes certain qualifiers if you want it to. It can conflict with certain other uh, values. Uh, so property constraints are really useful in that they help guide uh, editors uh, and contributors to how to use that property correctly. Uh, and if you break a property constraint, you don't have to worry. They're not going to kick you off Wikidata or, or anything. It's just there to help uh, guide you in the right direction. Uh, it's not a rule. It will allow you to continue to edit. Um, so you can always break constraints, but they're there to say like, hey, maybe you want to change this file format, or hey, maybe you want to uh, express your date a little differently on Wikidata. Uh, we can talk about constraints a little bit more, but it's important for you to know that they're all listed uh, on the discussion page of any property. Uh, as we scroll down, we can see that this, um, this particular property belongs to a list of person properties. So it frequently helps describe or express a person on Wikidata along with all of these other properties. Uh, so not every single property has a box like this, but because this is so commonly used, somebody added it, which is great. Uh, and scrolling down from here, this is where this starts to resemble a talk page on, on Wikipedia. Uh, and this is where the discussion about how to use this property um, takes place. So you can see the very first question somebody asks is how many images should uh, a particular item on Wikidata have? Should it have three? Should it have seven? Should it have just one? And you can see where they have this, um, this, this conversation. And in, in some cases, it's very consistent on Wikidata. Most things just have one image, but some things do have multiple images and you're allowed to make an argument for that. And so I, I find that this is a really great place to understand the current conversation around relationships uh, with properties on Wikidata. Um, some properties are very straightforward to use. I would say that in spite of all of this conversation, this is a pretty straightforward property. Others are a lot more controversial, expressing relationships uh, and identity uh, markers on Wikidata is uh, really important uh, to individuals, peoples, uh, and groups across the world. So the sex and gender property, for example, uh, has way more conversation happening than this image property and as it should because that's a very significant thing to everybody uh, on the planet and that's an evolving conversation and um, there's a lot of work to be done with sex and gender on Wikidata uh, and it's the, the conversation is ongoing. So I, I share this with you just to say that uh, checking this discussion page on Wikidata is a really important way to understand where the community is, what needs to be done, any shortcomings uh, that exist as a result of the property existing um, and also just how to use that property in general. So this is where that conversation happens. I'm gonna scroll back up to the top uh, and just review that this documentation explains how the property is supposed to be used. And the way that we got to this discussion page is I'm looking at the image property, P18. You can search for image up here at the top uh, and that's how you can get to this page. And then you can click on discussion right up here to arrive at this little property manual. So let me pause and see if anyone has questions about how properties work on Wikidata. All right, cool. Uh, well, as I mentioned, there are 8,000 properties on Wikidata. So a question you might have is how do I find them? Uh, and I've got three tools that I'd like to share with you to discover properties. And the first one I'll paste into the um, chat is the list of properties and I'll also, also demonstrate how it works. Uh, this is the list of properties on, on Wikidata. Uh, and I'd, I'd recommend using this uh, search box right here so we can do image. Uh, and this just limits anything you type into that box to properties. So as we scroll down, we can see there's this P18, which is kind of like the classic image property that I just demonstrated. Um, below it, uh, all these associated uh, image properties that capture different kinds of images, so seals or commemorative plaques or plain view images. So there's a lot of different ways to describe images on, on Wikidata. If we go back one page, we can type in any property that we think exists or that should exist, and that will take us through to that set of results. Below it is this list of, of groupings and categories that I kind of hate. I don't understand who made them or why they exist, but you have like spacecraft under pornography, which is too below judiciary. They just seem very random. And I think uh, there could be much better categories, which is why I'd, I'd say just stick with this search at the top. Um, and this is best used when you know 
of a property that you want to look up. So it's not great for discovery. It's more meant for kind of reference uh, and kind of getting right to that property that you're interested in. Uh, if you're interested in property discovery, uh, let me share this next tool with you, uh, which is called Prop Browse. We have a couple sure. questions in chat, oh. Will, just to jump in. Um, are the alternative terms for a property under its description only in English? They can be in any language, but I imagine a lot of them are in English currently and probably lacking in a lot of other languages. And then another, since Sparkle is supported, I assume the data can be represented as triples, but how are qualifiers and references, which are info about statements, represented in that formalism? So technically, references are qualifiers. Uh, so they're just like a special kind of, of, of qualifier. I can find the RDF image if you're interested in that, in that level of description, um, but I'll, I'll have to dig it up, which will take just a second. So let me get back to you about that. All right, so back to property discovery for a second. This tool is called Prop Browse. Uh, and this is great because you can type in image into this tool and get uh, a list of properties that have image either in the description or the label. They also list some examples of that property in use. Uh, and they also list the data type. So you can see for this one, uh, it doesn't take an image as a value. It is an image uh, identifier that links out to, it looks like the Australian Center for the Moving Image. Um, so it represents images in a different collection. So this is a good way to get image associated uh, properties on Wikidata. And you can scroll down and see there's a full list of all these image related properties. Um, it's not the best for describing the differences between the properties. It's much more just getting a list of image associated properties. Um, but my favorite discovery tool, uh, let me just pull it up is called Prop Explorer. And this one is great because, let me share my screen again. Uh, there's this faceted search. So you can start to describe what you're interested in. And we'll do image one more time. We can click this Wikidata property linking to a representative image. Uh, so it's a little more specific in its description and you can zero in on what you want a little bit faster. And then you can also search within the set of descriptions that it returns for you. Uh, so maybe we want just maps. Um, we can type map in the description and it filters through all of the properties and just uh, brings up the relevant ones that use map uh, as a descriptor. Uh, a really good example of how this faceted search is useful is location-based properties because there are a lot of different ways to describe location on Wikidata, some of which make me want to tear my hair out, others which I think are pretty cool. Uh, so we'll click this bottom one, Wikidata property to indicate location. Uh, you can see that this one describes first performance, some mapping files, uh, shares border width for geographic locations. Uh, so there's a lot of different ways to express location. And this is just this bottom filter. If we click this one above, this one describes uh, events. Um, so locations of filming, locations of uh, birth, locations of death. Um, a lot of different image properties. And I find that this kind of grouping and subgrouping uh, really helps orient you to property usage. So this for, for discovery, I think is the best tool, but it's kind of nice to have three because you'll be able to search for whatever you wanna search for in the way that makes the most sense. Um, so there's, like I said, thousands of properties on Wikidata. Uh, getting used to them will take some time, but it's nice to know that there are tools that exist uh, that help describe and uh, identify the the properties that you might be most interested in using. But just to circle back to a point that I made earlier, I find that the best way to um, become comfortable with properties and understand which properties are the best for the items that you want to edit is by looking at items that are using those properties. So checking out those lists on the documentation pages, stumbling upon items that are very well, very well modeled. Um, and then you can just start to see over time which items use those properties more, more commonly. So I know that's kind of a, a different way of approaching data modeling, but uh, it seems to work for all the different kinds of items on, on Wikidata pretty well. So let me pause for a second to see if there are any property related questions. Looks like there's one in chat. A yes. few of us are in a 
basic link data workshop, we're supposed to do a query that locates pizzerias in Washington, D.C., which property for this statement? Uh, is, is it in Wikidata? Are you querying Wikidata? Yes. So you'll probably want to use the coordinate location for that. Um, uh, and that, uh, you can just look up co coordinate location. I forget what the P number is for that one, but that is points on a map, basically. Uh, that's what will reveal where local pizzerias are. Um, and that will only work, by the way, if the coordinate locations for those pizzerias are listed on, on Wikidata. So that's an important thing to be aware of. If that property doesn't exist, then it won't show up on the map. That's a fun question. Oh yeah, Sarah, thanks for asking that. Is it possible to add new properties? It is, let me show you how to do that just because this is gonna be important to so many of us. So let's say we wanna create a property. Uh, welcome back to the Wikidata homepage. Uh, to create a new property, uh, I recommend going to Project Chat. There are two ways of accessing Project Chat from this page. One is clicking Project Chat right here in kind of like the middle of the page. The other is on the left-hand side in this menu. Um, this always exists on any page you're looking at on Wikidata. So I like to click this one, Project Chat, third link down. Project Chat is kind of the main conversation page, page for anything on Wikidata. So you can see there are all these conversation topics where the community is talking about any, anything uh, that is happening on Wikidata. Um, so you can always go there to see what people are talking about. But up here, this little set of links is really useful. Uh, you can see you can request a bot on Wikidata, you can request a query, but you can also propose a property. So we can click this particular link right here. You can scroll down uh, and you can see that the proposals are, are divided into these uh, large topics. I find that these groupings are a little bit better than those other property groupings that we saw earlier. Um, I imagine a lot of us are interested in authority control, so I'll click that one as an example. And if we scroll down, we can see there's this little like off-white box uh, that gives you a couple warnings before you make your property. And basically what this um, provides an overview of is uh, it encourages you to check to see that your property doesn't exist yet or that it wasn't recently proposed or is pending. Um, and just to keep it consistent with all of the other properties that uh, exist on Wikidata. So to create a property, all you would have to do is say new property and create a request page. This is gonna look a little intimidating if you've never worked with Wikicode before, um, but basically this is the form you fill out and all you would have to do is anything after these equal signs. Uh, these little grayed out uh, remarks are just notes that uh, explain what to do, but you would fill out uh, everything after these equal signs. So the subject item corresponds to the concept represented in this property, um, the name in English or other languages, you could list that up here. Uh, allowed values and some examples. And you scroll down and you also want to include a motivation. So explain why you think this property should exist, why it would be used, why it's important to exist on Wikidata. Um, and then you would publish the page. And that would create one of those blue boxes I showed you earlier and it would be up for um, conversation in the community. So let me show you what some of these proposals look like. Uh, I'm just gonna pick, let's see, Ted speaker, numeric ID. You know, Maybe that's Looks like there's a question in the chat. Are properties also multilingual? Yes, they can be. Um, I think the majority of them come up in English, but I've seen them in other language, languages. You'll just see a lot in English, unfortunately. Um, so here's a proposal. Uh, it creates this blue box. You can see here are a set of examples that link out to the speaker IDs on this other uh, website. The domain pertains to humans and groups of humans, and it's an external identifier. Uh, so uh, yeah, we're in, in the ident identifier section. We scroll down, we see that there's a little uh, motivation thing filled out. Uh, and then there's the Wikidata user that proposed this particular property. As we scroll down, we can see there's a discussion uh, and it looks like there's some opposition and people explain why uh, they oppose this particular property. It looks like it might be redundant. Another property might already do the job of this property. Yeah, so people are saying we don't need two identifiers. And so it looks like this property probably will not be um, accepted uh, into Wikidata. And we can scroll down and see a lot more of these. Uh, let me try to find one where 
it looks like it'll be approved. So when people support it, they can support it. Uh, and it's good to remember on Wikidata, as long as you have an account, you are allowed to uh, support or oppose a, a property. Um, this is just how it works. And you can say why you support it or why you oppose it. Um, people who represent collections are allowed to um, create uh, create properties for like create identifier properties for their collections. Um, it's nice to just note to 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 avoid uh, conflict of interest, just to say like, hey, I represent this collection, but I think it's important. Um, it's very common for libraries to create identifiers that link back to their collections, um, and I I would just re recommend saying, you know, I represent this organization, so it doesn't seem like uh, you're you're. I, I don't know, stacking the ballot box when it comes to creating the properties, but um, they get created very easily for, um, for authority control. Uh, and this is, yeah, long list of uh, property proposals. Uh, every week, uh, properties get um, accepted or uh, turned away, um, and it, it, there are new properties all the time on Wikidata. So this is a, a good page to monitor if you're interested in property creation. But let me pause and check the chat. Oh, properties are, are multilingual, yeah. We already addressed that. Cool. So any other questions about property creation? You can also create properties that are not identifier properties. Uh, they can just be relationships that exist in the world. Uh, it's kind of crazy to exist on Wikidata for a while and realize that there are some very important properties that are missing. Um, at Wiki Education, I teach uh, these Wikidata courses, which are great because I get to work with a lot of uh, library and museum professionals who are very smart and very passionate. Um, and I had a student create a exonerated of property that used to not exist. Wikidata used to only be able to capture conviction information and not exoneration information, which presents so many issues and represents so many problems, at least in the US, about um, criminal justice. Uh, and so it kind of blew my mind that there was just the conviction property and not the exonerated of property, but now that exists. So this is just an example of other relationships in the world that you can use properties to describe. Oh, Adam's sharing that um, he proposed three properties. Hillary helped and got all three approved in a week. Very exciting. Yeah, and then you can say to your friends and family, who I'm sure are always eager to hear about this, that you helped contribute to a global ontology to describe the world. Um, that's always a good conversation starter. Um, but it's true. It's like one of the most uh, interesting things about Wikidata is that we all contribute to its, its ontology, which is interesting. Uh, Stella asks, how long does it take to get the results of the request? Usually property proposals are open for seven days. Uh, if a conversation occurs around representing that property, or there's a back and forth, it can extend for a couple weeks or months in rare cases. Um, so it just kind of depends on, on the property being proposed. All right, so if there are no other questions about properties or proposals or property discovery, let's transition to uh, editing. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is show you an example of uh, adding some references to a Wikidata item. Uh, I'm gonna recommend that we use Wikipedia article references as our references for our Wikidata items just because they already exist and we don't have to do a lot of searching. Um, and I'll show you how to do that. But before we get to that, I want to have everybody join the dashboard for this particular workshop. And the way that you do that is, if you have a Wikidata account, which I think everyone in here should, all you have to do is click this link uh, once you're logged in and that will get you to join the dashboard. And that's all you have to do. Um, and this will just track the edits that you make. So if you have questions, we can zero in on your questions a little bit faster. Uh, and also if, if there's a mistake or something, we can say like, oh, hey, look, try, try to redo it this way. Um, so give that link a click. Um, and once you're on the dashboard, we'll be one step closer to editing. So I'll just give everyone a minute to do that while I pull up a Wikipedia article to edit. I'll also add that during this little editing session, we can, we can take a little break if people need to stretch, touch their toes, run to the bathroom or something, grab a sandwich. It's a marathon, these two hour sessions. Whew. 
All right. Um, well, as people are clicking the link to enroll in the dashboard, I'll start this little demonstration for how to add a reference to Wikidata. Uh, and again, I'm just using references as a jumping off point because there are a lot of statements on Wikidata that don't have references yet. Uh, and I find that they're very structured uh, and kind of prescribed way of adding statements to Wikidata. Um, as you move forward uh, with your Wikidata editing, you are by all means allowed to add new statements to things, um, but that requires a little more familiarity with um, properties. So that's why I'm starting with, uh, with references. And again, I'm going to um, advocate for two different ways of creating references, one using the ref reference URL property and the other using the stated in property. Um, so let's, let's just dive in. I picked a um, Wikipedia article called Marcus Books, which is a bookstore in the Bay Area that specializes in African American literature, history, and culture. Uh, very cool bookstore. Um, a recent Wikipedia article, so the Wikidata item is, uh, is very tiny um, and doesn't have a lot of information, but you can see if we scroll to the bottom, here are a lot of uh, references for this particular article, so we can use any of these references on Wikidata as well. To access the Wikidata item from a Wikipedia article, all you have to do is go over here on the left-hand side and click Wikidata item. Uh, by the way, you can do this from any language, Wikipedia. Um, I'm just using the English one. So we can click into Wikidata item. And that takes us to the corresponding Wikidata item for this Marcus Books bookstore. We can scroll through and see that there are a couple different statements uh, that don't have references. So um, Marcus Books is the name of the bookstore. It was named after Marcus Garvey. Uh, we should add a reference to make sure that uh, this is well backed up. So what I'm going to do is go back to the Wikipedia article. I'm going to find this section in the article uh, that says this was named after Marcus Garvey. We can just hover over this footnote. I'm going to right click this and copy the link address, which refers back to this Berkeley source from um, 2020, or at least that's when it was accessed. So it's uh, recent enough. We'll go back to the Wikidata item. Give it a second to load. And so I want to add a reference. I click add a reference. Um, and I know it, I want it to be a reference URL. Uh, I've already got the um, URL copied, so I can just paste it into there. Uh, and right now I could click publish and it would publish the reference and we'd be done. But there's one additional step that I'd encourage you to do, which is to add a retrieved on date. So we can do, I'm just typing in retrieved. The internet has been known to change and I want to type in today's date. So this is how it will be uh, represented. And now I can click publish. And I have just edited Wikidata. You can see right now that there is a reference URL uh, that backs up this claim and it was retrieved on today. Uh, and I could do this, I could add multiple references that back this up. I can go on to uh, the next statement and add a reference for this. Um, but I'm using the reference URL property to link it to this particular URL and I'm adding a retrieved on date uh, just to say that I did it today. Uh, if I got this information from a book or a magazine that exists on Wikidata, I would click add a reference. I would use the stated in uh, and I would uh, select the book uh, that corresponds to this particular uh, claim being backed up. Uh, in this case, there isn't one, so I'm not gonna type anything in. Uh, but you would just type it in and the Wikidata item would appear. You would click on that item and then you would click publish and you would be done. Uh, so those are the two ways to add references to uh, Wikidata. Let me just cancel that. So there that is. Um, let me pause and see if anyone has questions about adding a reference. Archive URL, like from the Internet Archive? Yeah, you're welcome to uh, use uh, uh, a URL from the Internet Archive too, if, if it's not accessible uh, from the regular internet. That's acceptable for sure. Um, the most recommended, no, you, you, can, you can bring in any reference that you want. I'm just recommending Wikipedia because the references already exist. Uh, so you don't have to go searching for them. But if you know something off the top of your head, 
uh, you're welcome to, to use that as long as it's a, a valid reference. Uh, Outrun, uh, can it be to a Wikipedia page? No, it should be to a reference on a Wikipedia page. The Wikipedia pages are a little too, too general. Uh, Adam is asking if you can use uh, authority records. Um, and yeah, you can. Uh, I've seen references constructed that way before too, and that's a perfectly acceptable way to create a reference on, on Wikidata. And Prem is asking, um, if you use the stated in property, will you be required to create an item uh, for that item? If it doesn't already exist on Wikidata, then yes, you will have to create that item. So that's why it's kind of easier to use a reference URL just for this uh, exercise. But in general in life, you are more than welcome to create new items that represent sources. All right, so let's give this about uh, 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, I'll, I'll stick around here if, if you have questions and then we'll circle back and, and see how everyone's uh, references have gone. If you wanna add more than one, you're more than welcome to, um, but the whole idea is just to add a couple references uh, to some statements on Wikidata. Marellis is asking, can we see what items uh, need references? I would recommend just selecting an item and scrolling through the statements and seeing which ones have zero references. Uh, you can run queries for things that don't have references, but these number in the, the many thousands of things, or I don't know if it's millions, but a lot of things need references. So I would just take a look at items. Well, questions coming in the chat about where to go from the dashboard and using it to launch a Wikidata item. Oh, you don't, you don't need to use the dashboard to launch a Wikidata item. I would just recommend going to wikidata.org and searching from there. The dashboard is just to track uh, progress. And I've also included some additional resources in case you want to review what we talked about after, after our session. Looks like there's another question. So we create a reference and then we will delete it just as a test, right? No, keep it. We want, we want to keep these references. This is real life. We're improving Wikidata.
All right, so we'll give it just a couple more minutes and then we'll, we'll circle back and check in. Another question in chat. So I add a reference in, but where to add retrieved? Great question. Um, so let me just pull up the example that I was walking you through earlier. So we added a reference to this Marcus Garvey area. Uh, the way that you add a retrieved uh, date is this add button right here. And I get that it's confusing because there's add qualifier, add, add reference, add value. Uh, we want the one in the light blue box. So it's right underneath reference URL, click add, and then we can type in retrieved and it will autofill for us. And then we can just type in today's date. But I've already added that information so I can just hit cancel and it just still should be there, yeah. What kind of reference for an image? Uh, you can also use a, a reference URL, that's fine. Or if it's stated, if the image comes from a, a book or another kind of work that is on Wikidata, stated in. Uh, looking at Chris's question, so you want to click here. Let me let me just walk walk through this to make sure that we're referring to the same thing. So when you want to add a reference, looking at this um, country statement, uh, the first thing you want to click is add reference. So we'll click add reference, and from there, uh, it's prompting you to enter a property. So stated in or reference URL is what we'll be focusing on. There are other ways that you can. Uh, create references, but this is just where we're starting today. Uh, so we'll do reference URL and then in this box you would paste in the actual URL itself. It's a lot, of, it's a very boxy experience. Oh, so in that case then you might not need a reference if it's coming from, from Wikimedia Commons. Or you can go to Wikimedia Commons and see where that actual image came from. If the publish button is grayed out, that might mean that you've already published it. I would just refresh the, the screen and try to edit it one more time. Looking at Trishani's question, there are only there's only one reference under San Francisco, but why does it state that there are two references? Okay, not good. Cool, Chris. Um, which which property are you looking at, Trishani?
in case you didn't see, she's looking at located in the administrative. Oh, okay, I see. Oh, so it looks like for that particular reference, um, the retrieved the retrieve statement was added as an additional reference and not as part of the reference URL. So this is a really easy mistake to make. And let me just, I can walk you through correcting it. Yeah, save the reference after entering it. We wanna, we wanna capture all these references, great question. So let me just show you the San Francisco one. So this is what Trishani was mentioning earlier. Uh, and to fix this, so I'm just going to click on edit. Uh, and so we're going to remove this retrieved. Uh, and the reason we're removing it is because we want to add it to this reference URL. We don't want it to exist on its own. We want it to be part of this reference URL. And whoops, retrieved. And we'll do this. Oh, we'll look, 10 July 2020 is today. And we'll click publish. And so now it only shows up as one reference because those two statements are together, whereas before they were separate. Uh, and there was a reference URL which counted as one reference. And then this retrieved was listed as a second reference. It's, like I said, boxy and confusing. You're more than welcome to edit the description uh, if you want. And just echoing Christine's point, uh, it is very easy to make this mistake. Uh, like I said, it's very boxy and it's hard to know which links uh, correspond to which part of the box, which is why we have uh, group workshops like this to help get oriented to it. And I don't want anyone tearing their hair out or throwing their computer out the window. So hopefully this is a little helpful. Uh, to save the reference, you should just click publish in the upper right hand corner. So let me show you where that, that is again. If we click edit. Uh, and if we make an additional reference, uh, this grayed out publish button right here will turn blue and that's what you click. You would click that to save or capture the reference that you've added. So in that case, Chris, if it's grayed out, that means that either you've saved it already or uh, you might just have to refresh the page. Uh, And Mario is, is saying couldn't write a longer description. Huh. Well, maybe we'll, we'll circle back to descriptions in a little bit, but I do want to be aware of the time and slowly draw everyone back to uh, the presentation. So uh, wrap up any, any edits that you're working on right now. Um, and we'll, we'll get back together here in just a second. So the dashboard doesn't update in, uh, in real time, but uh, I do wanna point out that uh, for whenever it just updated, uh, we've added at least 41 references to Wikidata, which is awesome. And we've edited over 20 items. Uh, and I share this with you to say, congratulations, you're all Wikidata editors now. Uh, thanks for making Wikidata a little bit better. Uh, we did that in eight minutes. Uh, so imagine what we could do in an hour or a week. Um, I know that uh, as, as you could see from, from the chat and from all the questions that everyone was asking, there are a lot of different pitfalls and little places that can be confusing on Wikidata. Uh, so practice really is important, but I also hope you can understand how uh, the barrier isn't that high. Uh, you can just click edit and you can start making some edits. Um, and the more you do it, the easier it will get. Uh, and if there are any outstanding questions, uh, we'll circle back to those in a little bit. So I just wanna say thank you to everybody for uh, just diving in and making some edits. Um, I find that uh, using Wikidata, um, one of the best ways to use it is to be an active contributor because you can really start to understand what goes into Wikidata and have a stake in it yourself. Uh, so I would encourage all of you to continue editing. Uh, and if you have questions, always feel free to reach out and ask.
Um, so that's adding references and statements to, to Wikidata. There's a lot more that we could talk about there, but um, that's just one, one way of knowing and interacting with, uh, with Wikidata. Uh, the other way that uh, I'm going to devote to the rest of the session is um, querying and pulling that data from Wikidata, uh, which is one of the most uh, interesting aspects of Wikidata uh, and one of the most dynamic, and it's where Wikidata is super powerful. Uh, so, uh, what I'm going to present on uh, are uh, Sparkle queries and the Wikidata query service. You do not need to know how to uh, read or write Sparkle in order to do what I'm going to show you. Uh, I have done a lot of queries in the past, so I will manipulate the code a little bit. But um, the way that I am going to demonstrate all of these queries is through already existing queries. Uh, and that is a really great way to understand Wikidata and the query service. Uh, a lot of people who use Wikidata use pre-existing queries and just adapt them to their particular needs. And so I will leave you with a lot of resources for where to find some sample queries and you are more than welcome to adapt all of them. But before I get to that, uh, let's do a little walkthrough of the Wikidata query service page. So we know what we're looking at, we know what we can do. So let me share my screen. Uh, here we are back on Wikidata's homepage. On the left-hand side of that screen, you can see right here is a link to the query service. We can click that and we get to the query service, which is split into these three big windows. Uh, the URL is easy enough to remember. It's just query.wikidata.org. Um, what we're looking at is the Wikidata query service. This window on the upper left is the query helper. Uh, this can help you construct a query without using any Sparkle code. Um, the window on the right uh, is where all the Sparkle code will go. And below is where all the results of our queries will end up. Um, Sparkle is uh, a query language. Uh, if you've used SQL before, it's similar in that they both run queries, but SQL is more of a tabular-based language and Sparkle is more of a, a node or graph-based language, so it is very different than, than SQL, unfortunately. So if you know SQL, sorry. Um, and it is, a, it is a language. You could devote you know, a, a whole eight weeks to, to learning Sparkle and still not know everything about it, uh, which is why this is going to be an example-based tutorial. Uh, so what are we looking at? Uh, over here on the left-hand side, this menu, if you click the letter I, it opens and expands the query helper. If you click these arrows, it will allow the window to take up your full screen. Um, this pin right here is for a series of prefixes. Uh, we don't have to go into a ton of detail about prefixes, but if you're at all interested in pulling in data from other Sparkle endpoints or other linked data repositories, prefixes are a good way to do that. Uh, the diamond will clean up your code. Uh, if you're messing with the code, it can get a little messy. Um, this folder, if you click this, will pull up some examples. Uh, the examples folder up here does the exact same thing. Uh, if you click on the clock, uh, it will uh, restore your previous query. If you click the trash can, it will clear whatever you're working on. And if you click the link, uh, it will create a short URL to this particular query that you've been working on. Uh, so if we click examples. Uh, this is where you can work through over 300 different queries uh, and you can search for um, keywords, so whatever you're interested in. If you're interested in maps, you can click on a map uh, and limit all of these uh, different example queries to maps. Uh, if you're interested in a particular property, you can type in P18, uh, which is the image property, and you can see all of these different queries um, that use images. It's important to remember that the example queries are just submitted by Wikidata community members. There's no uh, particular uh, selection process other than the queries work and um, there's some interest in them. I want to profile uh, a query that I pulled up earlier. Um, that's one of my favorites. That is a query um, that will list all of the current mayors who identify as female uh, around the world. Uh, so I pulled it up right now and I know it looks kind of crazy. Don't worry about it. I'll explain what's going on. On the left hand side you can see that this is how the query help helper um, explains the query that we're about to look at, and this is the corresponding uh, Sparkle uh, code. Some quick notes about the Sparkle code itself. Anything with like the pound sign hashtag in front of it is a note, uh, and so that doesn't have anything to do with how the query works, and you can see that there are these little descriptions. 
right here that explain which each, what each line does. Um, the, the text in red are operators for Sparkle. Um, the things with question marks in front of them in green are variables. Uh, and the text in blue uh, are um, references to Wikidata itself. So the WTD refers to a property and the WD refers to an item uh, and so on. Uh, like I said, you don't have to worry about any of this, but it is good to know that you can manipulate this and completely change the results of your query. So let's run a query and see what it looks like. We'll click this play button right here to run it. Uh, and it's going to fill out this area down below. And so we're looking at the query results. Uh, just like we asked, here's a list of um, mayors who identify as female of uh, large cities around the world. Um, it's the largest cities uh, that have female mayors is what we asked for. And you can see that it links us back to the item for the cities and the, the people who are in charge of the cities. Um, and these are our query results. A couple more things to know about the results is that you can download all of them. You can click this download uh, button right here and download them as JSON or a TSV file, a CSV, HTML, or images if there are images that correspond to it. This is really important for everyone to know because this is the easiest way to access data on Wikidata in a structured way. So you can say, give me a list of X, Y, and Z things. The query service will spit it out. You can download it as a CSV and upload it into your collection, into your uh, linked data ecosystem, or whatever, whatever you want. You can just have it for free. Uh, you can also link to these results by clicking this link button right here. You can click the short URL, copy and paste this, send this over to somebody. You can uh, embed the results. So if you want to embed uh, this table onto a website, you can do that with this iframe. Or you can uh, have it be represented in code by clicking the code button, and it will spit it out in all of these different uh, coding formats, uh, which is great. So uh, quick query results. Uh, you can translate it into a lot of different kinds of code. You can download it. It's free. It's yours. You can share it with anybody you want. And this is uh, one of the beauties of Wikidata. Some other cool things to know about the query service is if you click this eyeball over on the left-hand side, this is um, a set of your visualization options. Uh, so it always defaults to a table. We're looking at a tabular view of all of the query results. If we had images, we could create an image grid. If we wanted a graph with the nodes and the circles uh, to represent the relationships between things, we could click that. If we had map coordinates, uh, it would spit out a map. Um, so it's important to know that you can represent this data in a lot of different ways and also embed this data in a lot of different ways. Um, it's nice to talk about, but it's better to share. So let's update this query to have it show us uh, some additional things. Let's say that we wanted uh, some pictures of the mayors. We could do add a line like this and say, I want some images and we'll call that image. Uh, and then we'll also add that variable up at the top. One question in chat is, yeah. can I save new examples? Can you save new examples? Yes, that's the question. Yes, uh, I will show you where to go for new examples in a little bit. Um, so right now, uh, I'm asking the query to give me some images of these mayors. I added a, a line of code and a new variable at the top. Uh, and we'll run this query again. Uh, and so right now you can see this, this new uh, column exists with images. And so we'll go to this I and we'll click image grid. And we should see a list of all the mayors uh, as images, which is pretty cool. So uh, by tweaking just one line of code, uh, we get all these different images and we can download this gallery uh, and have them for whatever we need them for. Um, but let's say I'm not interested in the mayors, I'm interested in the cities. We can just change this variable to city. Uh, and we'll run this again. Uh-oh, I broke it. This is, this is a good chance to pause and say this is 95% of every query I run is this red line uh, saying that you've made a mistake. Uh, and it's worth noting that um, queries uh, do, do break uh, and that's okay. Um, we can always just go back and see what we did wrong. There's a question in chat um, asking of the prefixes P, PS, and PQ. Yes. Uh, so the PS um, is the qualifier. I think P, P and PS are qualifiers. Um, 
I need to look that up. I don't remember off the top of my head, which is which. Um, but there's a full list and I'm gonna share uh, like the Sparkle manual with everybody once this is done. So you can see what PS and PQ mean, um, but they all refer to uh, qualifiers and um, statements within those qualifiers. Great question. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna move away from the, the image example. We'll stick with um, images of the mayors, but let's look at a map too. Um, so what we're gonna do is for the city, we want to add map or coordinates. And we'll just call that coordinates and we'll add this variable for coordinates. And let's see if, if this will work for us this time. Uh oh, oh, I get it. Okay, so we're running this query again. Uh, and this time I've asked for map coordinates. Uh, and so the coordinates appear and then we can uh, select the visualization output and select map. And just like that, we have a map of all of the, the large cities uh, with the mayors who identify as female. We can click on the dots and see that this corresponds to Mumbai and Kishori, uh, who is the mayor there. And we can go back to the table and we can download all of this again uh, and take that data with us, which is super useful. Um, but what I wanna convey besides me breaking the query a couple times, uh, which happens, is that you can uh, quickly manipulate queries uh, to have them produce completely different sets of results, completely different sets of properties, relationships, and data types uh, to get the exact slice of wiki data that you want, which is super powerful. Um, you can also change the limit. I'm only grabbing 10 right now, but if we wanted all the cities, we could change this limit to 1,000 and have a complete exhaustive list. But let me pause because I think there are some questions. Yeah, there was a question in the chat about um, adding an image uh, and whether the result brings back only mayors with pictures or whether there would be a blank for those who don't have an image? Yes, there would be a blank. Um, and Christine nailed it with the optional filter. Uh, that's what you would use to say, uh, give me a list of things that have images, but if they don't, I still want you to return the thing. Uh, it's okay that it doesn't have an image. Um, and if you don't use the optional, it will not show up um, because you're asking for an image and if it doesn't have an image, then it doesn't satisfy the the query. Yeah, when you're using the query builder to create queries, it puts in, like if you put in um, a property in show, it puts it into an optional wrapper by default, right? Yeah, it does. Uh, just taking a look at the questions. When the query will normally be broken, is there a place to troubleshoot or find the error? Uh, no, there isn't, uh, which is kind of frustrating, which is why I recommend using example queries um, and just kind of practicing from there. Uh, it's once, once you have a basic understanding of Sparkle, it's pretty easy to pinpoint where your error is going to be. Or if you make changes incrementally, it's really easy to say, I made this change and then it broke, so I'm gonna go back and undo that change and build it from there. That's kind of how I taught myself Sparkle, but there are a lot of things I don't know about it still. Um, so it just kind of depends what you're looking for, but it is a lot of trial and error and embracing that terrible red bar that said you've broken the query and not taking it personally. Looks like there's one we skipped over. Can you limit it to, to a state? So um, I think this was referring back to when we were looking, using the coordinates. For the like mayors. a state in the United States? Right. Yeah, so. you, you can limit it to anything you want. It'll take me a minute to, to put that together. Um, let me see if I can just do that off the top of my head. Yeah, it, it'll, uh, it'll take me a second to, to actually construct that just because there's a lot of different ways that you can ask the, um, ask the question in Sparkle. Um, but yeah, you can limit it to a state. Um, you can limit it to anything you want. Um, it'll just take, take some time to, to chew through that and do it correctly. Uh, let me just take a look at some other questions. Uh, Adam is asking, how did you get from head of government property to mayor? 
Um, so in the San Francisco item, there is a property that says the head of government is mayor, just because head of government in different cities isn't always mayor. So there's a property that specifies that. Uh, one thing that I didn't mention in this Sparkle tutorial that I'm giving to you right now is that you can define the, the variables as you wish. Um, so uh, I selected mayor just because that's what I'm used to. And actually, I didn't write this query. I should also say that someone else wrote it. I just adapted it a little bit for this particular presentation. Um, so by this, I mean, let me just share my screen. Um, mayor right here, I could have called this anything I wanted. I could have called this head of state. I could have just called this the letter M. Um, for any of the, the green variables, you can title them what you want. I find that it's nice to label them something intuitive, just so that if you share this query with somebody else, they'll know what you're talking about. Um, but you can call it whatever you want. Uh, and it's important also to know that when you do query it, um, when you're asking for head of government, uh, it'll just give you the values that satisfy that. Uh, if you do want strictly mayors uh, and not other heads of government that aren't labeled as mayors, you'll have to learn how to specify that with Sparkle, which is very tricky. Um, and I think that's also worth discussing is that uh, knowing how things are modeled in Wikidata is how you're able to run all of these queries. So uh, not knowing how things are modeled will make it a little more difficult to know whether or not your query is representing everything that you want it to. Uh, taking a look at Bradley's comment. What is the name of one pizzeria? Okay, so if you want to know um, the names of the um, pizzerias in, in Washington, DC, uh, I would just do some uh, regular searches on Wikidata at first, just to see if they exist as items on Wikidata. Um, I don't know any pizzerias off the top of my head, uh, except for that comment one with Pizzagate, right? That's in DC, right? Um, so you could start with that to see if that exists. Uh, and from there, I would see if there are geographic coordinates listed for that um, particular location. Uh, and yeah, Notorious Comet Ping Pong. There it is, Christine, thanks. Um, then, you could, then you could start to build your query from there and just understand that uh, you would use the um, coordinate locations for it, you would limit it to Washington DC or the DC area. Uh, and also, I, I, I'm not sure how pizzerias are modeled. I'm guessing the restaurants before their pizzerias uh, and probably take it from, from there. But again, uh, I think building queries from scratch is uh, very time consuming. Uh, so let me share with you some additional um, example queries and places where you can search for examples. Um, give me one second, share my screen. Uh, so we can click on the examples folder right here. And oh, there's no link, I thought there would be a link back to back to Wikidata, but I've got this window pulled up already and I'll share this in the chat. But this particular page uh, is where every single query listed in that example folder lives. You can see warning, editing this page will change the examples shown on query.wikidata.org. So if you wanna share an example uh, on that examples folder, this is where you would add it. And you can see this is a complete list of all, all the examples, uh, which there's a bunch. And if we wanted to zero in on one, so, uh, mountains highest, Italian mountains higher than 400 or 4,000 meters. We can click this uh, and here is the sparkle code uh, and it lists items used, properties used. And then if we wanted to try it, we could just click try it and it would take us through to the query service again. We could push the play button and that would run the query and hopefully it will give us uh, this list of tall mountains and some images it looks like. As this is loading, it's also worth noting that you are allowed to manipulate these, um, these queries and it won't break the examples. Oh, very pretty. Look at all of these pictures of mountains. So you can see that the query worked. Uh, these are all taller than 4,000 meters and they're located in Italy. Um, and it defaults to images, but we could also switch it to table and it will switch us to table. So we can, if we're just curious about those elevations, we could see that. Uh, if we're just curious about the labels, uh, we could see those. And if we're curious about the items, we can click into those items. Um, but we could change this query and it's not gonna break the example query, which is really important for all of you to, to take away from this. 
Uh, so if I accidentally added another letter and pushed play, it'll say, sorry, this is broken. It doesn't work anymore. I didn't ruin that example. Uh, we can always go back to that example page and click try it and it will take us back to the original working query. Um, it's also important to note that this line number 10 that starts with service, uh, this specifies what label language appears in your search results. So right now it is uh, Italian, but we could switch it to any language that we wanted to, or we could switch it to multiple languages. Uh, it's really easy to switch. If you wanted to switch it into English, we could switch it into English. Um, oh, and then it's going to take a minute because it's going to give us some images instead of just the tables. Uh, but because Wikidata is organized the way that it's organized, it's, it's very easy to switch from one language to another using the query service. So let's just go back to table. And we can see that the name switched from Italian to English. So again, um, that list, I said I would drop it into the chat. I don't want to just give you the, the mountain example. I want to give you the whole list. So there is the, that example list. And if you wanted to add one, you could add it to the, the bottom of that list or to the, it'd be best to add it to the section that corresponds to whatever your query represents. So if it's a map query, put it in the map section. If it's a history query, put it in the history section. Uh, and this is just one of many places to find uh, some queries. This next source that I'll share with you uh, is great for um, kind of query fundamentals. Uh, this is where I would go if I wanted to actually learn some, some Sparkle and not just get some results of the queries, uh, which might make more sense to some of us than others. But if you actually want to learn Sparkle, that second um, link that I dropped in the chat is the most useful place to go. I'll share my screen so you know what I'm talking about. But you can see right here that uh, the first set of queries are all about understanding Sparkle. Uh, and then from there, it gets a little more complicated with qualifiers and pulling references, and site links and dates. Um, and then it also offers a little bit more of an explainer about what you're querying. Uh, so you can see how these things relate to each other in terms of how they're written in Sparkle. So I find this to be an excellent resource as well. Uh, and then if you want the most fun query example reference, uh, Martin Poulter is the Wikimedia in Residence at the Bodleian Libraries uh, in Oxford. Uh, this is a link to his user page. Uh, he uh, is just a real whiz at uh, writing queries and they're really specific and very creative and he has over 300 of them listed uh, on, I think it's more than 300 on his user page, but let me just share this. Um, so you can see there's a lot of Ox Oxford specific stuff, but I find um, if you represent a collection, there's no better source to go to to understand how Wikidata can represent that collection for you in a lot of creative ways. Uh, so maps of things in Oxford color coded by type. Uh, I mean, I, I would never think to, to write this and I would have no idea that this would exist in Wikidata, but we could run this query uh, and see what is color coded by type uh, on Oxford's campus, I'm assuming. So we can just click there and see, well, I wish I knew more about what the color coding was, but there, there you have it. Uh, it's that easy just to go into his, his user page uh, and click onto this various links uh, to run these queries to get to know how, how they work. Let me pause and just, oh, okay, Kristen's adding um, Martin's uh, Wiki, Wikidata query post, which is great. So there are a lot of different resources for um, both uh, example queries and for teaching yourself Sparkle. The last one I would recommend is this wiki book um, all about Sparkle. It walks you through all of the different elements of Sparkle. So let me share my screen again. You can see that this is the table of contents. So if you're interested in prefixes and, and what all the letters mean and how they correspond, uh, you can see that P refers specifically to a property, PS refers to a statement, PQ refers to a, a qualifier, uh, and you can see them in action with all of these examples right here. So I, I think this wiki book is a really, really great uh, reference tool for teaching yourself some Sparkle basics. Uh, it's also really nicely organized. So if you're only working with one kind of query and you want to get really good at it, uh, you can select this optional section, for example, and get really, really good at describing things that may or may not have, uh, in this case, 
children properties uh, or gender properties or date of birth properties and still have your queries work. So taking a couple steps back, it's important to remember um, that Sparkle is a full, fully fledged query language. It takes a long time to learn. Uh, I'm recommending uh, an approach where you learn through examples and you adapt those examples for uh, the reasons that you need to. Um, I'm encouraging you to break queries and learn from it. Uh, and also to, uh, to yeah, uh, learn, learn a little bit of basic Sparkle. Um, and that'll go a long way in being able to understand how queries work. After you spend some time with queries, the place I would recommend you go to next is this particular page on Wikidata, which is request a query. I'm gonna go share my screen again. And this is where you can go to ask community members to either enhance, tweak, or create a query for you. And before you all run off and um, start requesting queries, it's really important to know what you're asking for first. So it, it doesn't do a lot of good in this area to say, I want a query that gives me a list of all the famous ducks that exist on, on Wikidata. It would be great to say like, I have this query, I'm hoping that it will give me this kind of result. Who can help me with it? Um, that'll get you a lot farther in this area. And it, it, you know, people are volunteering their time to help write queries and it's always nice just to, to give as much information as you can. So I would recommend uh, knowing what you want first before you come in, come in here and you just ask something. Um, but it is a really nice space that exists on Wikidata and people are really um, patient and willing to write queries for you. Uh, so this is another excellent resource for getting the information that you want out of, out of Wikidata. All right, so there's some really good questions. Was there anything that I missed? Yes, the session is being, being recorded. Yes, we'll share the recording afterwards with everyone and it'll also be posted on the session description page too. All right, so I'm just gonna pause for a second and do a quick review of everything we've discussed because it's been quite, quite a, a morning, afternoon, or evening, depending on where you are. Um, so the whole idea behind this session uh, is to orient everyone to Wikidata, um, some of its basics, how it works, how you can contribute to it, and hopefully you feel a little better positioned to move into the rest of the LD4 conference. Uh, with some knowledge about Wikidata. Uh, we talked about the history of Wikidata coming from this need to connect all these different language Wikipedias and how it kind of became something larger than that uh, in representing all of the world's knowledge and becoming a database of databases and a hub of identifiers for many libraries and museums and other um, holders of, of collection information. Uh, we talked about items uh, and properties and values and how that's a, a semantic triple in Wikidata and how you have uh, statements express all of these relationships uh, between properties and values and items, how all of these statements have references uh, to back up these claims. We even created some references uh, in this course to back up the claims uh, for these items. Uh, just checking the dashboard, we're at 63 references added, which is pretty cool. Great work again, everybody. Um, we did do some editing, uh, so you know just what it takes to uh, edit Wikidata. Uh, there are a lot more tools uh, associated with Wikidata that can assist with your editing. I mentioned this very briefly at the beginning, but there are batch editing tools where you can upload uh, like thousands of things at once or tens of thousands of things at once from your collections. Uh, so uh, we just focused on some manual edits to get to understand Wikidata a little bit better. We spent some time with the Wikidata query service, did some um, example queries. The query service is the main way to pull data from Wikidata. Everything is free and you can reuse it. Um, it's also a great way to um, create maintenance queries around projects that you're working on. So if you're uploading entire parts of your collection, you can see what you've added so far, what might be missing. Um, the query service is a really, really great um, entry point for that. And it's a great way to evaluate all of that. Um, so monitoring data quality and progress and maintenance issues. Um, and that is, I think, everything I wanted to cover for this introduction to, to Wikidata. Um, does anyone have any questions about everything that we've covered so far? All right, cool. Um, 
Oh, thanks, Jessica. Appreciate it. Thanks, Adam. Um, I'm happy to, to stick around uh, and answer any additional questions you might have. Um, I will say um, I, I want to thank um, Hillary and Christine and Susan uh, for helping co-facilitate this, this session and for inviting me to present. Uh, I do want to make a plug that uh, there are some really cool Wikidata sessions uh, happening later from some really, really wonderful colleagues of mine, and I would strongly encourage you to attend those. I hope that um, this has helped at least a little bit with um, with introducing you to uh, to Wikidata. And oh, Hillary's pulling up the additional sessions. Yeah, so this is um, in that first link I had shared. Uh, there's a second slide that has kind of all the Wikidata related sessions that I pulled out. I'll reshare the link. Um, so if you're interested in learning more about projects that are already using Wikidata and um, also there are a couple other tutorials. Uh, none of these have attendance limits as long as our Zoom capacity isn't reached and I'm pretty sure most everything is being recorded as well. So, um, so all of these are additional opportunities throughout this month to get some Wikidata experience. So thank you, Will, for giving us such a great foundation to build our Wikidata knowledge for the rest of the conference. Of course. Uh, one last thing is that I do, I do teach Wikidata courses. And if you're interested, I'm just going to drop a link uh, that when new ones come up, uh, we can let you know about it. Um, they're multi-week. They're a lot more detailed than this. But uh, yeah, thanks again, Hillary, um, and everyone else from LD4. This was really wonderful. Uh, and it was great to meet all of you, either through questions or through follow-up emails. And you're welcome to reach out to me. Um, I'll leave you my email address in the chat, too. Uh, I love talking Wikidata, and I'm really happy to um, be able to have spent this time with you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Will. Um, this, uh, as we said, this is being recorded, and all the chat will be shared uh, through the recording as well, um, so you don't have to worry about missing any links. And the dashboard will remain up to uh, that's correct role so that um, you'll be able to access the links that are there as well. And um, also wanted to point out that for any Wikidata related questions or discussions you want to continue, we have a conference specific uh, track on the Slack channel, LD4 2020 Wikidata track. And then there's also a general Wikidata channel that will persist past the conference too. So you're always welcome to bring up any discussions or questions there. Uh, Christine, did I miss anything? Or Susan? Yeah, uh, I was gonna say that you should um, plug your Wikidata affinity group. Um, uh, but if you did not, I don't think you did already. That's true. So um, there is a LD4 Wikidata affinity group. We meet um, every two weeks for calls and then we have a Wikidata working hour um, when we, the weeks we aren't meeting. And I'll just drop the link into the chat for um, the information uh, for the calls and share that with you. So we discuss a lot of um, Wikidata related topics. Uh, so hopefully um, if you're able to join us, that would be, we'd love to have you. And um, those calls are recorded too. Uh, so the information is at the page I just shared. Does anyone have any last questions? I'll just jump in and say thanks for editing again. You've been a really wonderful audience and you've done some great work uh, today. So thank you for that. Great. Thank you so much everyone for joining and editing and we hope to see you 
at the rest of the conference and future Wikidata workshops and um, presentations. So take care and thank you so much, Will, for leading this excellent session. Anytime, thank you. Bye everyone.